Hello there, and today um, we're talking again to one of our professionals in the uh, Spanish real estate business. Uh, it's Amaya from Prime Legal in uh, Spain. Uh, she's actually an abogado, which is a Spanish lawyer. And she's here today to talk about the various aspects uh, involved in the property purchase, the services that she offers. And uh, anyway, without further ado, Amaya, if you could just uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about what your, your firm does. Hi, Steve. Pleased to be here with you today. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm a Spanish lawyer, as you said. We are specialized in property law. Um, the law firm names is uh, Prime Legal, and we offer legal advice and personalized service to foreigners who want to invest or live in Spain. We advise on all aspects of buying and selling a property both sides, sell side or buying side, and we take care of all the necessary procedures, pre-completion, after completion, and other after sale formalities. Okay. Um, now, perhaps what you could do is tell us a little about the, the actual purchase process in Spain. So, particularly from the point of view of, of British people or foreign people buying a property in Spain, be it a second home or a permanent residence. Uh, well, there is a huge difference with the UK because there is no regulation about conveyancing in Spain. But the main steps to a purchase are um, more or less five. In my case, I resumed it in five steps. So the first step should be uh, do your research and use a reliable state agent in the area which is going to inform you about the situation of the property, if it is a good investment or not, or even if you are looking just for living or to for invest to rent it out after he or she will inform you if it is the best option for you. The second step will be a deposit on a reservation contract. When you have chosen your property you'd like to, you'd like to buy, your, the first step is to secure the property and uh, taking it off the market. So in that moment you will be asked to make a deposit and, and sign a reservation contract. This contract normally it is very short, uh, it just um, says names of the parties, uh, which property are you putting the deposit on, um, few other uh, conditions for the, for the purchase. But you have to be aware that the deposit normally it is not refundable. So you, before signing any contract, we always advise to get a proper advice so you don't have any trouble. The next step is the purchase contract. Sometimes from the deposit, you go straight to completion. But normally you have a proper purchase contract in the middle, which uh, takes all the conditions, the installments, if there is more than one, if you're going to pay maybe a part of the price in a month and then the rest in completion. So, and there is where all the things about the property has to be done. This is a moment as well where we run all the checks on the property that you don't have any kind of chargers or if there is a mortgage or if there is a mortgage or any kind of charges we take care that they are all cancelled before you complete an a notary. Um, the last step, the main important step is the completion which it, which takes place on oh, sorry in front of the of the notary and he he will be aware of all the legal procedures that have taken and then is when you sign your property deed uh, with the deed we will take it after to the register land registry and we will pay the tax and everything so the last step will be after sales which is you don't have to do anything. We will do all the work for you. We will take the deed, we will pay the taxes, take it to the land registry, and also we can set up all the supplies on your behalf. So you just need to sit, the client needs to sit down and relax. Okay, that <laughs> sounds like you've got a traffic jam outside uh, your office at the moment. <laughs> but not to worry, it's not a problem. I think uh, everyone would have understood what you're saying there. And just, just to clarify the final point, I think you were saying that 
you you take care of changing over all the utility uh, titles, uh, utility accounts, so such as electricity and water and that type of thing. Okay. Yes, that's yes. I forgot to tell you about when we run all the checks on the property, that is also the moment to get the NI number, which is the tax number for foreigners. And you, uh, the client will be asked to have this number for any kind of transactions in Spain, to open a Spanish bank account, to buy a property, to sell a property, or to contract to set up the, the supplies. So this is a need you have to do. Okay. Um, actually, could, could you just mention something about the NIE number? I mean, is the, is the process to actually obtain an NIE number, the fiscal number, uh, is it a very difficult process, a lengthy process? It is not a difficult process, but now it is full of, uh, <laughs> they, they, they have a lot of work with, because we have been with the lockdown and, and now with the applications for before Brexit. So it is not a difficult process, but it can take a while. You need to fill up a, a form, pay, pay a fee, and then you get an appointment with the police station or the tax uh, or the foreigners offices, and, and then queue there to present your application and then depending on the location it can take longer it is about two weeks maybe a month it depends on the in the area the difficult thing is to get the appointment because as, as i'm telling you they are really busy after lockdown um and they have many applications before brexit and obviously going on from that um how is the whole the brexit situation how is that affecting um the situation for um, particularly British people wishing to move to Spain soon and, and, and be residents in Spain. What is the situation there? Well, they, they need to hurry up because we have a, tran a, trans a transitional um, agreement at the moment, but it will end at the 31st of December. So we with the withdrawal uh, agreement, it says that all rights will be maintained up to the 31st December 2020, uh, as if UK was still part of the European Union. So those who have exercised the right to reside or work in accordance with the European Union law before the end of the transitional period and who continue to do so after that period will have exactly the same rights under the withdrawal agreement, uh, especially who had the right before Brexit. Um, but uh, those who have arrived after the end of the transitional period and who are not included in it will be considered third country nationals and will be subject to the provisions of the general regime for foreigners. Okay, so I think really the message there is if you're um, a British national and you want to become a resident in Spain is you need to really start uh, you know, working on this as soon as possible because the, the, the clock is ticking. There's, there's, there's only a few months left. Okay, that's great. Amaya, this has been fantastic to talk to you um, and the subjects we've covered um, very briefly, but it's been great. Um, obviously, um, there, there, there is... You, you, sorry, <laughs> carry on. Excuse me. I just wanted to uh, make a clear point about the residency in Spain it, it, to take the to get the residency before Brexit it also has tax implications as uh, for example with the capital gain tax with the rate will be higher if you are not considered resident in Spain or European Union resident if you are considered a third country uh, national it will, the rates will be higher so it will happen with some uh, taxes so that's something that to keep in mind as well Okay, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's uh, also additional information which people need to bear in mind. Um, so, Amaya, thank you ever so much for joining us today. Um, I think, you know, we have had some, some uh, interesting information and uh, I'm sure that many of people watching will uh, have many questions for you. So, uh, what we can do is we're finished now today and uh, at the end of this video you'll see contact details uh, for myself, Steve Hayward of CBVA, we're real estate, real estate agents in southern Spain, and also for a mayor of Prime Legal where you can contact her and uh, email contacts as well if you have any questions. So, uh, 
great. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming today. Thank you, Amaya. Thank you. Thank you.